Chiefs Kingdom asking, what do you think about Cam Jurgens? Uh, some snaps, yes. Can he turn it around? Oh, absolutely. And I think that was one of the biggest th- takeaways uh, for me last week was that you didn't notice those bad snaps yep. in the game. Uh, he had a couple of high ones, but uh, for the most part, nothing that disrupted any anything really last week. So uh, Cam has shown that he goes through those, those rough patches and, you know, he, he gets some one-on-one time with Coach Austin and uh, Coach Austin straightens him out and uh, you see him playing well again. And uh, I, to me, I think it's just something in his head that uh, – I think he's trying to process too much, uh, trying to think about, you know, who he's got to pick up on that particular play. So, uh, you know, like we've said several times that he's only played this position for a couple of years. I mean, he's a tight end um, turned offensive center. And I agree with coach Frost. He'll, he'll play on Sundays as a center in the NFL. Um, He's got that kind of talent. And, uh, you know, he, he's a he, he's a very smart, very smart kid. And uh, he knows the game of football very well, and he loves to play the game of football. So, uh, yeah, I don't see him having any of these problems. Hopefully they don't resurface, but if they do, I think it's a quick fix that I think he's been able to show that. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. We talk Nebraska. We would do it with uh, Greg Peterson. You can join him at Husker Online. Joins us every week uh, on this Thursday night Nebraska show. We will keep this going based on your contributions and also possible sponsorship. So we've got one right now with Phone Genie. And you got to check out considering, do I need to tell you, COVID issues. And uh, they're getting worse, unfortunately, across the country in different areas in particular. And uh, these fine folks at uh, Phone Genie, and we'll get the banner up in just a second, they uh, develop products to fight um, germ issues, germ mitigation products, both for your home use or business use at the office or workspace. And they develop those products and they're top of the line. So check them out. They're at Phone Genie. And uh, your website is Tolly Brothers LLC. And again, I'll put the banner up here in just a second. Totally Brothers LLC.com. Two games left for the Huskers. Hopefully, we've got uh, Minnesota coming up uh, this week, uh, a team that uh, downed Nebraska last year, Big Ten Western Division foe. And then the, the kind of fun portion of the season, in my eyes, at least when they built the schedule, was that'll be interesting to see who everybody gets matched up with uh, the final weekend of the season as uh, they will. Uh, of course, pair off the number one seeds for the Big Ten championship game, which is a bit controversial in that Indiana met the six-game requirement, but Ohio State had the better record and the head-to-head win against Indiana. So the Big Ten powers that be changed the rules and says Ohio State's going to the Big Ten championship game to take on Northwestern. Now, for the good of the Big Ten, hopefully the Northwestern is able to hold off Illinois and show up at the Big Ten Championship with a 6-1 and one record and not stub its toe. It would have been nice to have an all-undefeated Big Ten Championship game if Northwestern, Greg, wouldn't have gone to Michigan State and slipped up there. Well, yeah, then you think about last week, too, with uh, Wisconsin and Indiana. Um, if Wisconsin wins that game, then you got Wisconsin still vying for that uh, Western division. So, um, yeah, you know, we're lucky if we get games in right now. So it's just, uh, you got to keep your fingers crossed. So, you know, when the crossover comes next week, uh, it's going to be interesting to see just uh, who gets matched up with who and who's actually available to play. But, uh, you know, at Ohio State, they beat Indiana head to head. So I, I have no problem with what the Big Ten ruled. And, you know, the Big Ten just, They've made such a mess out of this since day one that, uh, you know, how can you basically keep the best team in your league from playing for a championship when they are undefeated? So, yeah, that rule was kind of silly to start with. And you, you got you to gotta finally give the Big Ten a little bit of props for, uh, you know, being able to go out there and, uh, and actually change their mind and uh, maybe swallow a little bit of pride. But uh, – yeah, <laughs> we just we're just glad that we get a, get a game on Saturday, and if it's snowing, it's snowing. It's just uh, kind of rare that we're talking about 
mid December and you know, at least for the last couple of years that we still have Nebraska football going on. <laughs> yes, it, it is crazy that uh, here we are mid December and it's going to be smack dab in the middle of national signing day. That's going to be a few days right before that championship weekend in which hopefully everybody in the big 10 gets to play. But, but I'm with you in regards to, and I can understand Indiana folks, Indiana fans being upset because they played the minimum number of games and technically they would be the team that would go. But again, I don't know if the big 10 set down that rule and didn't give it another thought. I can't imagine that they didn't foresee a situation in which they could have a team that was like three and oh, and then maybe two other teams that would be disqualified and have like, have to have like the fourth place team in the division go to the title game. And they're like three and four and have them go to the, like that they didn't think that, or that they just thought, you know what, we're going to put in this standard rule and most likely it's not going to come up. We won't have to address it, but if it does, we will. Uh, because again, I think it makes total sense to start with that rule. Okay. You need to have a minimum number of games played unless a b c d because yeah because it happened yeah because it happened and you've got ohio state of five and oh you're supposed to play six games but the funny thing is that they could basically say you know what give us the sixth game forfeit it and you know we still have the same record six and one five and one is indiana and we beat them head to head so it, it's it's it, it the decision it makes sense but it unfortunately had to come to that and everybody knows that it's a, it's a decision about money too, because that 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 brings in money to the conference, and uh, everybody gets a piece of that pie. So uh, obviously, you want your best team to be eligible to make it to the college football playoffs. So we understand. <laughs> you have any thoughts about this whole playoff situation in regards to uh, just in general? Do do you agree with a four team playoff any season, or would you like to see it expanded? And then as it plays into 2020, because of all the discrepancy in how many games are being played and no non conference games to speak of, uh, whether it should have been uh, expanded this year? Yeah, I mean, I'm always one for more the merrier. Anyway, I, I would like to see every year. I'd like to see that field expanded to. I like eight. I, I like eight. I'm I, with eight. Yep. I'm a big eight proponent. Yep. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think, in, you know, you talk about not kids not being able to play that many games. That's that's hogwash. I mean, these kids will play as many games as you allow them to play. You know, that's, that's what they do. That's why they're here. So, uh, yeah, expand that thing to eight. Keep it like that. Give some more teams – a chance, you know, let some of these little guys, like, you know, like a Coastal Carolina this year, you know, see what they could do, you know, if they had to go play Clemson in a, on a neutral field or something. So, uh, yeah, I'm all for that. Um, this year is just, it's such a mess. We don't know, you know, you can, you can plan something like this, but you don't know if you can, you can get it off. It's just with what's going on, you know, this, this year's definitely going to have an asterisk by it anyway. Um, you know, if you go out there and claim the national championship um, and all you did was play your own conference, it, it, it's kind of a strange national title, if you ask me. So, yeah, it is it is what it is this year. And uh, just be thankful that we actually still have college football that we can watch on Saturdays right now. I do think that if the college football playoff, and it looks like it's going to look very standard, you know, Clemson, Notre Dame, Alabama, Ohio State, that that will give it more credibility. Whether it should or not, I don't know, but people's look at it will be more like, okay, well, it pretty much looks like it probably would have after 12 games. So so it seems legitimate as opposed to if you know, if you would have had Iowa State and and you know, or you know, just just uh, some some teams that aren't necessarily considered to be the elite kind of sneak in there. Uh, through some loopholes and and get in because some other teams couldn't play enough games kind of thing, then that would have looked uh, a bit odd to people. But it looks like it's going to be a pretty standard uh, uh, powerhouse uh, college football playoff. I mean, wouldn't you like to see like a Cincinnati get in there? Yes. Yeah, that, that'd be cool, I, if you ask me, you know, and, you know, 
Cincinnati against Notre Dame in one of those semifinals. <laughs> Greg, my thought process is that you got five conferences. How do you have four spots? Right, and right. I know that people have perception about the Pac-12, and it, and then sometimes it's the ACC or the Big 12 or wherever not being as good. I understand that. But they just don't play enough non-conference games for that to be proven. And big deal, the Pac-12 showing up at the playoff twice. They made it to the championship once. And the other game, they didn't get blown out, uh, Washington against Alabama in 2016. So it's not like they've been some kind of an embarrassment. I just think every conference should be represented. And um, then also either do something with a group of five. Don't don't try to placate them and make them feel good by ranking them seventh and twelfth and twenty third. And never have a chance. And never have a real chance. You're you're almost insulting them by ranking them. You know, like UCF is an undefeated team, number eight in the country. That's that's almost an insult to say. You know what? Either include them or don't include them, and say go play your own playoff and and be real with them. Well, I mean, you know, look at a team like North Dakota State. They dominate playoffs, you know. And, uh, you know, if you're going to have a Power Five, okay, have your Power Five play for their championship and then, you know, do your group of five and uh, you, then your Division Two. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> Just let more, more teams in. <laughs> Nebraska Real Talk is asking for your thoughts about Turner Corcoran. Oh, love Turner Turner Corcoran. He's a he's a big road grader. Um, can't wait to see him get a chance next year. After uh, well, if some of those seniors leave, <laughs> you never know. You got to sit around another year. But no, Turner Turner. Uh, I've loved him since uh, the first time I saw him play when he was a senior in high school. Uh, went down to uh, Kansas City area and uh, watched his uh, Lawrence uh, Free State team just dominate a playoff game and and he was a big reason why and uh he was also uh all-american and played in the all-american game last year too so um you know he's a, he's a big guy he's got some great technique and uh right now he's uh in that strength and conditioning program and uh getting stronger and getting bigger getting meaner and uh He's a guy that likes to plant his opponent on his behind. Talk about another top-notch player here, of course, with uh, Thomas Fedone, the uh, number one rated tight end, according to Rivals. And uh, Chiefs uh, Kingdoms asking for some analysis and breakdown on Fedone. It is Fedoni. Is it Fedoni? Yeah. I did. Yeah, I was uh, wrestling that. In my mind, didn't know which way to go on that. Fedoni, Thomas Fedoni. Yep, Thomas Fedoni. No, uh, great athlete. Uh, got just soft hands. You know, he catches about anything that uh, comes his way. And, you know, the guy's a matchup nightmare. Um, you know, his uh, his team, his, his high school team there, Lewis Central out of Council Bluffs, um, you know, they've been fortunate, uh, you know, Max Duggan, who plays, who starts at TCU, uh, was their quarterback, and they've they've been putting they've been uh, four or five years in a row they're putting guys in D one spots, and, and they're doing really well uh, wherever they land. So and and, and Fedoni's another one of those guys, um, and he's the another one of these high character guys, uh, super smart. You know, he's an early enrollee. Uh, which is a lot of the a lot of the commits in this class. Uh, at least half of them are all early enrollees, so that tells you a little bit uh, about what they've got going on upstairs. And uh, you know, Fedoni is one of those guys that uh, he's going to stretch the field for you. Um, it, it's kind of funny because uh, in high school they used him outside uh, most of the time, and uh, you know, you got a, you got a five eleven corner out there on on him. He's six six. And uh, it's such a it's such a matchup nightmare. It's hilarious to watch sometimes. Uh, it looks like he's playing against a midget football team sometimes. And uh, it's it's funny too because uh, every time when when he'll come inside and put his hand down in the dirt, look out because he's going straight down the field and they're throwing to him. And uh, usually it's a sixty or seventy yard touchdown. So uh, yeah, he, he's a good looking kid and he's. Uh, you know, the highest ranked uh, recruit uh, that Nebraska has been able to land um, since uh, Baker Steinkuhler came out of Lincoln Southwest High School here. 
So, uh, yeah, good things coming out of Thomas Fedoni and, and uh, that tight end room uh, with three in-state uh, tight end commits in this class. Uh, Nebraska's set for quite a while at the tight end position. All right. We're just about uh, set to wrap it up. Uh, we'll wrap up some loose ends, though. Uh, James and Ballard, thank you for saying it. Hi, appreciate that. Uh, recite uh, to Muslim. Uh, he had an interesting, what did he have to say here? Now I missed it. Shoot. Uh, but I'll get back to that in just a sec. There it is. It's, uh, when was the last time? When was the last time? So I always, Greg, have to poke a little fun at these kind of questions. If you've got the internet and you've got Google, you don't need to ask us the last time Nebraska beat Iowa because that's a Google question. Yeah. That's a Google kind of, I think it was 2014 off the top of my head. I think it's five straight. It's been five straight. Yeah, yeah 2014. But yep. you can Google those kind of questions. Anyway, and uh, last, uh, I don't know who raised this topic, but I'll give my two cents before I'll cut Greg loose. Somebody asked here and I'll find it. How long is it going to be before Nebraska is a national championship contender? My thought would be Wisconsin is the best program in the conference, in, in the division. They are the standard in the division. I know that they're not going to win the division this year, but they've been the standard. Let that be your goal, your objective. Nebraska could certainly, based on tradition, name brand, recruiting footprint, facilities, money, be able to do at least as well as Wisconsin. So that, that should be the first program you're looking to take down. No, you said that perfectly. Um, yeah, you, you got to take baby steps at, at this point uh, from you know the depths that your program had dropped to, and uh, you know you you're still a blue blood. You're still a college football blue blood, but uh, a lot of uh, the younger generation doesn't remember that anymore. So uh, to to be a national championship contender, that's almost going to be impossible to predict. Um, the the game has changed completely since uh, the mid '90s when you saw Nebraska just rolling over everybody, and uh, you know the game has caught up. Uh, the 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 facilities battle, the facilities race, the arms race has has caught up. So uh, parity, so many more good programs out there than there used to be. Um, you still see it it top heavy with the those those certain programs that are always up there, but. Uh, you got so many other up and coming programs that, that give other other programs fits. Um, so, you know, now, now I lost track of the question. What was your question? <laughs> Basically, when is Nebraska going to contend oh, for a yeah, national yeah, championship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, and like you said, uh, yeah, you got to, you got to, you got to win your division first, and I think that's always clearly the goal. Um, the goal when you start a season, you're always going to talk about you know your ultimate goal is a national championship. But uh, the way this program is right now, you know, making a bowl game this year is a step in the right direction. Um, and then you can start thinking about maybe contending for the West and and beating Wisconsin and beating Iowa year in and year out, like like you're supposed to be, like people think you're supposed to be, like you're supposed to be when you join the Big Ten. Um, and then, you know, if you start winning some of those conference or some of those divisional titles and you start playing Ohio State, you start uh, – instead of losing by 30 points to Ohio State, maybe you're uh, you're beating them by three or you're losing by three. Then you can start thinking about maybe a national championship. Once you can compete with a, a, an Ohio State in a year-in and year-out basis, then, then you're looking at maybe uh, being back to those glory days. <laughs> 